All right, uh, let's move on to the next talk. The final speaker for this session is Professor Dan Kwan Wee uh, from School of Material Science and Engineering NTU. And his talk today is Self-Assembling Polymer-Directed Hierarchical Structures for CO2 Capture. Professor Dan, please. Uh, thank you, Prof. Shi, for the introduction. Uh, so can everyone see my screen and the PowerPoint? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so again, thank you very much for the organizers to give me the chance to present our work, um, working together with uh, the ExoMobile team over the past two years on self-assembly of uh, polymer directed hierarchical structures for CO2 capture. So um, this talk is a little bit different because we are going back into the fundamentals and looking at materials design that could help us capture more CO2, or at least that's the goal that we are heading towards. Um, so just to introduce my team, um, myself, I'm, I'm the DPI, working with uh, Jonathan McCon McConaughey at ExoMobile. And then uh, together with us, most of this work has been, uh, was done by our postdoc, um, Dr. Zoe, as well as the PhD candidate, uh, April itself. Okay, so um, I don't think we need to really uh, re-emphasize again how important CO2 is. Um, capturing CO2 is important to, to um, reduce climate, uh, to mitigate climate changes. And of course, um, several of the presenters and, and have already given how, what is the perspective of uh, post-carbon capture technology. And here we are, we are looking at investigating, replacing, replacing the liquid elements with uh, solid type absorbent materials. And in this case, can we replace it with a simpler form such as a modular form? Now, uh, Professor Zhao Dan has uh, mentioned to us about um, designing of materials that is highly porous and that is on the uh, molecular organic framework systems, uh, metal organic framework systems with pore size that is on the order of uh, 10 nanometers and below. So here we, um, our group is very targeted to look at materials that is a wider range of pore sizes, uh, generating from both the sub two nanometers to uh, two to 15 nanometers and even higher. And we believe that alumina materials here could be the uh, possible solution um, under the metal oxide family because of the fact that if once you get to hierarchical structures, uh, you enable faster absorptions and flux kinetics, which I think um, something that's very, very um, important, especially once we go into the large scale deployment uh, beyond the proof of concept. Uh, furthermore, we think that uh, alumina itself is really widely used in many, many materials um, and applications, for example, catalytic converters and supports. So it comes, comes with very established thermal and chemical stability as well as um, relatively uh, non-toxic. Of course, uh, the ultimate aim here is to further increase the mass area as well as the pore volume so that we can capture more CO2 and by post-functionalization, for example. Okay, so um, myself, I have been working in self-assembly for the past 20 years. And one of the greatest inspiration that we can always look at is back to nature. And I think here, uh, this biosilica sponge is something that can be found um, worldwide in the, in the sea. And very astonishingly is that this, this is made of inorganic uh, amorphous silica, which itself, the, the lowest building block itself is only silica particles, which is on the order of 200 nanometers. But it's able to actually build up to um, centimeter scale and lo looking like the Eiffel Tower that is uh, present in Paris. And furthermore, this structure itself allows it to actually survive uh, under the, uh, the high pertinence of the uh, waves. So over many centuries uh, and, and millenniums, the nature basically is teaching us how to redesign materials from the bottom up onwards. And I think uh, furthermore, this is just to highlight that based on this very simple uh, structures, we, we can actually learn a lot of uh, new ways and approach. For example, in designing organic and organic hybrids, in terms of structure hierarchy, as well as in terms of shape control. So um, here we are looking at using polymers as a, as a way to actually approach uh, structure design. In this case, um, block of polymers, which is more or less came, came out in the last 50, 60 years, actually allow us to actually um, take this approach to design materials down to the nanoscale. Um, so without going to full details, it's just to say that these polymers are typically are very different chemically. So maybe one is hydrophilic and one is hydrophilic. And when we bind them together, they want to go through their uh, phase separation by at the micro scale. So you can imagine both water and oil. 
And now be, because they are confined, confined by their covalent bond, this allows to actually uh, arise to many different kinds of uh, massive power structures. Um, and just to show, shown in this schematically, and I think the key point here is to share that these are equilibrium structures, and um, but they are they are mostly fully uh, polymer, poly, polymer based, organic based. So in terms of functionalities and properties, they are still fairly limited. So um, one way to actually expand that functionality and property space is by adding additive. And in this case, one could add uh, organic or inorganic additive that allows the self uh, the materials to go through self assembly in a process that is called evaporation induced self-assembly. And once the material is formed in the form of monolith shown schematically here, we can do post-processing through calcination um, to generate the pores by burning the polymer away. So uh, just some key insights to how extensive this, uh, this community is actually looking, been looking at. Uh, we have expanded this into ceramics, like alumina itself to nit nitrites, which more recently has shown a uh, very interesting superconducting properties, and even to metals um, with uh, highly 3D order structures that provides you high surface area and mechanical stability. Uh, but one thing to, to take note is that again, because it's done at equilibrium, so the processing time itself is a challenge, uh, may take several days, and even the calcination to get to the crystalline materials um, will also take more than 10 hours. So fundamentally, very interesting, but in the application sense, uh, more work has to be done. So I will also share some, some uh, in the last part of the talk, I'll share how we are looking at this in, in tackling this at the development scale itself. Okay, so um, over the past two years, we actually have been trying to reinvestigate the formation of mesoporous alumina, um, not something new, but in this case, um, key thing is that we have now looked into how to how to further improve this, the recipe to actually obtain very stable alumina salts that facilitates the self assembly process. So with this, this will actually now allow us to actually expand the combustion space to explore more other structures that can effectively also increase the surface area and stability. And I think that one of the key things to, to highlight in the next slide is itself is actually allows to directly generate multi-scale materials in a one pot, in a one pot method. Okay, where we don't need to uh, have multiple building blocks to expand it into the macro scale range on the order of one to five micrometer pore sizes. So um, here is a key summary of our, our work. I think um, first is to mention that we can, two key parameters that we have uh, studied is in terms of how much acid are we using to accelerate, to promote and uh, the, the soja chem chemistry reaction of the additive as well as in, under one of the specific ratios, we can actually walk through the alumina composition space from about 28% to more than 38%. And very interestingly is that we can find that over the, the, the windows of about 98%, we actually can get hexagonal cylinders, where these are uh, cylinders, uh, these are the um, lamella sheets type of projections with pore sizes on the order of about 10, uh, about 10 nanometers. And then once you go into slightly increased uh, ratio to about 20 to 20, 22% we actually start to see that the structure evolve itself into the cubic structure. And in this case, the cylinders won't fall apart because the cubic structures can hold it in a much better way. And once we get to this kind of a, what we now, what we describe in the paper is more like a magic, whereby at a 28% with, a, with a, um, that kind of disturb the system, at the same time with accelerated um, solvent evaporation rates, now we can actually induce the polymers to form its own very rich areas, as well as the organic inorganic frame um, struct, um, phases to actually form highly ordered mesophases, phases, which you can see in, the, uh, in this transmission ele electron microscope of a six-fold symmetry or the cylinders itself. Thus, this actually allows you to access both pore sizes on the order of 10 nanometers as well as the micro is only one to five microns. And importantly, this such large um, micro pores allows you to have a, uh, enables high flux where the transport will not be um, impeded. And then the small area, um, small, smaller pore sizes here will allow you to have the CO2 enter and then get, get captured by the surfaces. And then once, uh, what we also have found uh, for the first time in, in the community is that if the acid ratio is 
uh, decrease. It actually allows us to actually access for another uh, methodology that is the lamellar structure. Uh, while this is not very um, applicable to the CO2 capture, but nonetheless, uh, this is one of the key methodologies that has not been identified uh, as far as we know. So this was published um, earlier this year okay, in ACS uh, materials and interfaces. So um, here I just want to, wanted to, to further emphasize the hierarchical structure formations. In this case, um, back in 2013, um, we, we, we kind of first reported um, using solvent evaporations to induce um, instability in the system that enables the direct formations of macropores, interconnected macropores as well as the mesopores. Um, and then by tuning the different evaporation rates, you can also further tune the mesophase morphology. Um, in this case, whether you're getting cylinders or you get the 3D network structures. So, uh, but in this work itself, it's all pure polymers because we are using additive in the order, uh, in the form of the polyethylene. So, um, over here, where we, we reported is now extended into the alumina family. And in this case, we are, we, we, as, uh, we are demonstrating two different kinds of morphologies. Um, so, panel A to E here shows you that. Um, structures that is macro um, is also hierarchical structures, but the the degree of ordinance can be further increased by looking at other parameters. For example, increasing the solvent evaporation rate. And what what we have also found that here is that even with the increase of the pore sizes, the surface area actually did not uh, decrease. It actually maintains more than two hundred meters square per gram, which is um in excess by by an order of many uh, by two times compared to commercial aluminum particles, which has no order. And pore, pore volume here is also on the respectable, it's about 0 0.33, which actually uh, can be further expanded uh, as we, we further optimize this. And this will allow us to actually uh, post-functionalize the surfaces, for example, with amine groups or with alkaline metals to further increase the absorption capacity as well as selectivity towards CO2. Um, so some physical, some equilibrium measurements that we have conducted uh, with the nitrogen absorption uh, tool at, at zero degrees Celsius and 25 degrees Celsius. So um, on the left here panel here shows you the some of the key data that we collected uh, with various ordered mesoporous alumina, and at zero degrees Celsius, the most of them exhibit on the order of about 0 0.6 uh, millimoles per gram. Um, so it is okay, but could be further improved. And this is what we did in this particular, uh, in this curve here uh, shown with this uh, square, square shape uh, points, whereby we, we further increase the surface area by introducing micropause. And this increased the micropause by, by another, uh, by a factor of two as well. Um, and then on the right side here is a direct comparison of the hierarchical alumina as well as the commercial alumina. And this is done more on the, um, at a more, um, room temperature itself, which I think is more um, preferred in the community. And you can do the, you can see the direct comparison here is about 0 0.55 to compare about 0 0.2. Okay, so again, this directly demonstrate that the structure order itself could improve, uh, would improve the pore accessibility as well as the transport behaviors. But nonetheless, more work has to be done, for example, uh, through the breakthrough experiments as well as uh, other um, absorption measurements that uh, Prof Dan has also demonstrated earlier. And then I think uh, in my, going back to my previous uh, discussion, uh, I mentioned we, that- Sorry, we also have one more minute. Got it. So, so this one is quick. Um, back in my earlier discussion, I said that the post-processing takes some time and to heat it and burn away the polymers takes you about 10 minutes. Um, here, we, we actually have uh, found an alternative approach by sandwiching the aluminum materials between two carbon papers and then applying a very high uh, current. So you can imagine this is your bread toaster where our material is actually a piece of bread squeezed between the heating element. And what we found is that uh, very, interesting, uh, very interestingly is that this heat process under one to 100 seconds, the materials itself retains its order structure. We can see this in the electron microscope at different hundreds of nanometers length or magnitude. And furthermore, it actually converts into crystalline materials, which again, like I said, takes more than 18 hours in the previous work. So this allows to actually shorten the duration by five orders of magnitude. So I think uh, with this, just to quickly summarize, uh, we looking at using polymers as a platform to form different ordered materials. 
And then the spindle decommission phase approach allows us to get a one pot uh, method to form hierarchical order structures. And by combining this with geoheating, uh, we will be able to form crystalline materials that is highly mechanically and thermally stable. And this will allow us to actually uh, further improve the CO2 absorption capacity and selectivity. And finally, as of, of course, the energy efficiency. So if this, um, thank, thank everyone in the team. Um, so this was taken pre-COVID days. So um, hopefully we will get back to this status um, much earlier. And also I'd like to thank the funding agencies and collaborators uh, for their heavy contribution in all our scientific discussions. So I'm happy to take any questions if there is. Thank you, Prof Tan. Are there short questions? We can answer one question. All right, I guess there's no question. We look forward to high performance of CO2 capture using your interesting structures. Thank you, Thank you again.